Now, last Sunday, I started talking here about the blood of Jesus. And I want to say that just as I was about to come, the atmosphere shifted and I felt like it looks like a crusade. You know, when, when you, you are in a crusade, sometimes the atmosphere shifts and you see the presence of God comes. And at that time, even if you don't speak, God starts working. Amen? And even here, God will start working in people's lives as we speak. Amen. But we read the book of First Peter. If you can remember those who are here. And uh, I didn't have so much time that time, so I did not. Uh, I just gave an introduction. So today, we try to go deeper into it and to understand the things of God. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. First Peter chapter 1, from verse 18 to 25. I will read it again. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversations received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of lamb without blemish and without spot. Now that vain conversation, uh, it comes, it's not talking. You know, in English, this, uh, when you talk together, it's called conversation. But this is translated from uh, activities, actions, your manner of life. So from your vain manner of life received by tradition. I want to say here that the Bible was not written for you and me initially. The Bible and um, everything that you see that is written there is written for specific purposes but because you came to know Jesus you are being counted as a son of Abraham as a descendant of Abraham as Apostle Paul says we are grafted into that family and therefore, when I talk about the blood of Jesus Christ, I want us to mention something about the origin of this and how you and me are now partakers of this. And I said that the blood does two things. It does what you call atonement. It does atonement. And that means instead of sin, the blood covers or washes that sin. And the other thing I said is that it does redemption, as Peter is talking about in his letter. Now, you should notice that the blood of Jesus Christ or any other blood mentioned in the Bible for that matter is concerning the redeemed. It's not about those who are not redeemed. So when we talk about the blood of Jesus Christ, we are not talking about people who don't know Christ. The blood has no effect on people who don't know Christ. Now, as you remember, when Aaron and his sons were ministering in the tabernacle, they were ministering among people who were already redeemed. Because the redemption happened in Egypt during the Passover. That's when the redemption occurred. And therefore, as you see, 
there were offerings for sin. So this sin that they were talking about was not sin of those who are not redeemed. It was sin of those who have been redeemed. Now it starts by the priest himself in the book of Leviticus chapter 4 has to offer a bull or a bullock for his own sins. And then you have the offering for the sins of the people. And then you find that there are those people who have done sin on their own, either knowingly or they don't know. They also had to be uh, sanctified by the blood. So there were various types of animals that were specified so that can be offered as a sacrifice for the sins of these people. Then comes what we call the Day of Atonement. Now in the Day of Atonement, it was a special day where sins of people were offered for even until next year. So it was assumed that the people would be cleansed of their sins until the following year when the Day of Atonement comes. And in the Day of Atonement, they brought two goats. And then there was a lot that was cast. I'm explaining this so that you see how complex it was. And you will see how important it was for Jesus to come. Praise the Lord. So they brought two goats before the tabernacle and they made lots. One goat was to be slaughtered as a sin offering. The other, the, they would put all their sins on that living goat. So the priest would put the sins of the people on the living goat and then the goat is released into the wilderness. What is called the scapegoat. Praise the Lord. You have heard in English something called scapegoat. So this is in the book of Leviticus. So the, the goat would be led into the wilderness where no one lives and that it would assume, it would be assumed that the sins of the people have gone with the goat. And every particular exercise was done meticulously, lest the people perish, lest the priest perishes. Because as you remember, the sons of Aaron were destroyed by the fire of God in the tabernacle just because they did not do something right. So it was very meticulous. And I also want to say that this offering of sacrifice was done outside the tabernacle. You had to offer the sacrifice before you get into the tabernacle. And those who listen to the message I taught about the tabernacle of Jesus Christ, you know what it means. The tabernacle that these people were having was one where you could not just enter. And the, even if you entered, there were areas you could not go. So there were a lot of complexities that were with this Old Testament. And then, in the New Testament, let us read in the book of Hebrews. Now, if we start from verse 11. But Christ being come, and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Now, so, just if we end there a bit, you see, Moses was instructed by God to make that tabernacle that they had in the Old Testament. And the Bible says that that tabernacle was made after the things that were in heaven. And therefore, what Christ came to do 
is to usher us into that new tabernacle which is in the heavenlies. Praise the Lord. So while there is a priest in the tabernacle on earth, Christ Jesus, that's what the Bible's uh, the interpretation of this, is a priest of the tabernacle in the heaven. So Christ comes as a priest and he offers a sacrifice. And that sacrifice that he offers is not of bulls and goats, but it is his own blood. And so Jesus came to offer his sacrifice, which was a special sacrifice in the sense that it encompassed the redemption and it also encompassed the atonement. Right? You remember the children of Israel were redeemed by the blood of the lamb in Egypt. And while they were redeemed, every time their sins were atoned by the blood of different animals. Their sins were atoned by blood of bullocks. Their sins were atoned by the blood of goats, by the blood of rams, and by the blood of um, uh, calves. But now, Jesus has come and offered one sacrifice. And that sacrifice, it does both redemption. It redeems us from the works of the flesh. It redeems us from the bondage of whatever kind. Praise the Lord. Anything that is binding anyone, the blood of Jesus is able to redeem them from. And therefore, if there is anything in somebody's life that needs redemption, a curse, or something that is bothering their lives, or something that looks like bad luck in their lives, or something that looks like things that have come from generations, the blood of Jesus Christ is able to redeem this person from all these things. The blood of Jesus Christ. As you remember, what the blood of the Lamb did for them in Egypt to redeem them from the kind of labor that they were having, the kind of difficulties they were having in Egypt, is the same thing the blood of Jesus Christ does for us today. So we don't need to serve the enemy. The devil doesn't need to put upon you a burden when the blood of Jesus Christ is available. Praise the Lord. Then, if you sin, if something happens in your life that looks like sin, the blood of Jesus is still able to cleanse you. You can call upon the blood of Jesus Christ. And that blood is able to wash you and make you perfect. And you can come into the presence of God. Just like Aaron. After he had cleansed his sins with the blood of bulls, he was able to come into the presence of God. And as we saw here when Pastor Becky was preaching about Melchizedek, you who has been born again, who has been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are like that arrow. You are a priest, and therefore you can go into the holy place. Praise the Lord. But through the blood of Jesus Christ. So I want you to know that without the blood of Jesus Christ, you cannot access the presence of God. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, you cannot be able to cleanse yourself of your sins. And your conscience cannot be washed without the blood of Jesus Christ. That's how important the blood is. The blood of Jesus Christ. Now, today, we have people that are trying to bring up a doctrine. And I want to tell you, you should listen to me very carefully. The blood of Jesus is enough. Amen? Amen. You don't need anything else 
to be redeemed. You, did, you don't need anything else to deliver you. The problem we have in the church today is that a lot of people are in the church and they are not born again. They have not accepted Jesus in their lives. They go to church because people are congregating there. They have some friends they are going to meet. They go to church because maybe there's good music. They go to church to socialize or whatever it is. But they have not accepted Christ in their heart. And therefore, a lot of bad things are happening in their lives. There is a lot of complication in their lives. And therefore, to atone for that, some people have come up with doctrines of deliverance ministry in the church. They are telling you, I will give you some water, anointing water. Or I will give you some handkerchief. Or I will give you some oil that you go and put on yourself. Praise the Lord. Now Paul says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Praise the Lord. If you be in Christ, you are a new creation. The old is gone. Behold, it has become new. And this new is of Pastor Silas. And this new is of if Christ. No. And this new is of God. Now where there is newness of God. How does bondage come in again? How does the devil come in again? If you are new in God, then you have the power to resist the enemy. You have the power to be free in Jesus' name. So the first thing is accept Jesus as a personal savior. Let Christ, let that blood that he, he, he bled on the cross wash you. Accept that blood into your life. Let the blood sanctify you. Let the blood make you right with God. It's only through the blood that we can go to God. Let nothing, let nobody cheat you that there's another way by which you can gain the things of God. Jesus had to leave all the good things in heaven to come and offer himself. Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 53, he was wounded for our transgressions. Wounded for our transgressions. All those wounds are supposed to cure your transgression so that you are clean before God. Praise the Lord. Some people, when they come to church, they think that they are uh, a, a bit unholy. They, let me tell you something. If you have believed in Christ, the wounds of Christ have already made you holy. Amen. And when you come to the house of God, you should be free. Hallelujah. Amen. Those stripes, they also heal our sicknesses. Both spiritual sicknesses and physical sicknesses. Amen? Amen? By the stripes of Jesus. Now, Isaiah says we are healed. Isaiah is in the 8th century. 800 years before Christ. And he's saying with his stripes we are healed. That's why Apostle Peter comes and says with his stripes we were healed. Hallelujah. We were healed. So if you are sick today, know that the healing, the antidote for your sickness happened 2,000 years ago. It was provided for. Amen? Amen? But because our faith in God has gone down, has diminished, 
We have diminished our belief. This blood seems not to be very active in our lives. Now you must accept Christ and believe in him and believe in the blood that he shed at Calvary. You must accept he died. He died for you and me, for my sins. You must accept that. And then there is something that also many Christians have avoided. And that is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Now some of you must have been in a chemistry class one time. And you know, in chemistry we have what we call chemical reactions. Right? You add one chemical to another, and then there's a reaction and you get another. Now, many reactions cannot happen until there's something called, and, um, what do you call it? Catalyst. Okay? Thank you. Catalyst. So you need a catalyst. We need a catalyst to make the blood of Jesus to have power, to be real in our life. And that's why Jesus spoke to his disciples in the book of Acts chapter 1. And he says, don't go. He told them, don't go. These are people who had been with Jesus. In fact, in the book of Luke chapter 10, Jesus had even sent 70 people. And they went and healed the people and, re and delivered them of demons. But now Jesus is going to heaven and tell them, don't go. Don't go. Wait. Wait. Until you are endued with the power. And that power, it comes through the Holy Spirit. So once you are born again, don't end there. Seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. On the Pentecost day, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And Peter, who was very afraid, even when a small girl asked him, but you are with him, he said no. Was now very brave. He came out and spoke of Jesus. And miracles followed them. If we want to live a life where the blood of Jesus works for us every day, we must be born again, we must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then no one, no one will cheat you. And no one will confuse you. Because there are a lot of confusion in the world. Especially about the blood of Jesus and the relationship we have with him. Now, if I may just end uh, shortly, I want to tell you that there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And the power that we have in the blood of Jesus Christ is able to deliver any person in any situation. Amen. You might be feeling depressed at one point. You might be feeling unloved at one point. You might be feeling everybody don't like you. You might be feeling that you are a failure. You might be feeling that there is nothing good that can come out of your life. You might be feeling that your family has rejected you. All these things, the blood of Jesus Christ can deliver you from them. Only if you believe. There are things that are working yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The name of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And also your faith. And the faith is by listening to the word of God. As I have spoken. And so now I want to tell you as I end. If you haven't received Jesus Christ. There is no one day. That you say today I give my life to Christ. You have never said the sinner's prayer. I want to pray with you now. Don't be afraid. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, if you are afraid of me in front of men, or ashamed of me in front of men, I will also be ashamed of you in front of my Father. Amen? Now, that, some people think that maybe 
when the end comes. But you know, Jesus is forever in the presence of the Father. And the Bible says he's interceding for us. So every day he's interceding for you. You know, we were reading the book of Revelation. And in chapter 5, verse 6, John saw in the midst of the throne where God was sitting was someone like the Lamb of God who was slain. Someone like the Lamb of God. He is there on the throne of God. And therefore, if you accept him here, he, he will accept you there. Praise the Lord. So, if you haven't received Christ, I want to pray with you. Just a small prayer. Just raise up your hand. And everybody just close your eyes. Just close your eyes as we pray. Anybody? Yes. God bless you. God bless you. Okay. I will pray. Even if you are afraid, pray the prayer. Pray the prayer. Amen. You remember Nicodemus? He went by night because he was afraid to be seen by the Pharisees. But let's pray. Let's help them. Even if you are born again, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my life. And I thank you for the Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, I give my life to Christ. I pray that you wash my sins. Remove my name from the book of death. And write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. And for shedding your precious blood. So that I might be called a child of God. Today I'm a new creation. In Jesus name. Let us clap for the Lord. Amen. If you say that prayer. And uh, you haven't said it before. Just see me after the service. Amen. Now, I will pray. I will pray now for everyone. In the name of Jesus, if you have sickness or anything that is disturbing you, right now we want to commit it to God in Jesus' name. I pray according to the power of the Holy Spirit. And as I pray, the Spirit of God will touch you, will move in your life will destroy every power of darkness, any spirit that the enemy has tried to use to try to, de to stop you from proceeding in life. Today, I want to cancel it in Jesus' name. Father, I want to bring all these people before you because you are God and your name is above every name. Your name is above every sickness or disease. Your name is above every kind of confusion in the world. Your name is above any kind of statement, negative statement that was made against anyone. Right now, I cancel every negative thing in these people's life. In Jesus' name, I find every spirit that makes people unhappy. I release the joy of the Lord in their lives right now. I release the healing of the Lord in their lives right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the glory of God shine upon their life. Let the power of God come upon their life right now, right now, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let us clap for Jesus. Amen. Amen.